<laughs> for our one bout of slight racism today. Uh, we told a white man he can't keep count or rhythm. So, <laughs> welcome to well, welcome to the Stanley Cup playoffs. Lime on tape. That's our only bout of racism. <laughs> <laughs> We get a lot of shots, everybody come to the net. We, we just have to get more and more pucks on the net. I'm about to listen to pucks on net. We used to talk about in Vancouver getting pucks on net. Pucks on net. What were you saying about putting pucks on net? This is JT Miller with the Vancouver Canucks, and you're listening to pucks on net. Pucks on net and, and uh, driving and making a hard night on it. Live on tape from a myriad of locations, this is Pucks on Net, a Vancouver hockey podcast riddled with rampant speculation without sources. Google defines myriad as a countless uh, or extremely great number, which is what we have today as we're coming to you from upwards of three locations. Uh, I'll be coming to you from my uh, apartment above the grounds of the old haunted Burger King. Uh, my name is Ryan Chap. I will be your host for this matinee show. It is 1213 Pacific. We are uh, still... Uh, feeling the effects of our morning coffee, so we're having a good time. Uh, uh, two quick links for you. <laughs> Patreon.com slash Pucks on Net. If you want to watch this podcast, you know, by the way by the way, uh, we're going today, this will be up by the East Coast uh, Game 1s in the Stanley Cup playoffs. Uh, and if you also want to watch our sports travel vlog featuring myself and the person I will throw to next, which is the Prince of Pomegranate himself, Mr. Arash Mamarzadeh. Arash, how are you doing this morning? I don't have a hangover anymore. I tie, I, Listen, I had one day in Seattle. And did, did I tie one on? Yes. And do you need to subscribe to Patreon to see me tying one on? Probably. Because <laughs> I get more progressively drunk and I'd like to think progressively funnier. Uh, in, in, in an American city, uh, called Seattle for whatever reason they called it Seattle. I don't know. I don't know. It's a funny, it's a funny city. Um, but I'm doing great. How are, uh, how, how are you, Ryan? How, I know we haven't introduced our other guest. I just want to ask her how she's doing, but how are you? Uh, I'm doing well. Uh, I've had a fair bit of Trader Joe's dark chocolate peanut butter cups. Nice. Um, but I'm feeling good. Got the day off and, uh, guest co-host, all of the above, fresh off of a stint in uh, the bougiest of the Hawaiian Islands, is our is Miss Gita. How are you doing today? Um, I'm doing great. I was in a good spot. I was relaxed. So when you came asking, I was like, sure. Plus, I haven't done a lunch cast in so long. We haven't had a lunch cast in so long. I feel like once we all got grown up jobs and uh, the pandemic ended, the lunch cast seemed to be such a uh, the brunch cast, the lunch cast, brunch cast. The brunch cast. Well, oh. and we well we stop living downtown, and those <laughs> distillery brunches probably have gone up with inflation. Oh my God! Don't even get us started about inflation. We Actually, all wait. Distillery isn't even there anymore. Yeah, because we stopped all the brunch casts. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the other link I wanted to share was youtube.com slash pucks on net. Uh, you can now uh, watch this podcast and stunning video on Wednesday morning. Uh, fell uh, gang. i uh, say so almost said fellas. Wow. Do we want to go? Uh, wow. Do we want to go right, <laughs> right into the, the Stanley cup playoffs? There was a lot of, uh, old dudes that got let go or got fired, but the press releases says they parted ways. Is there one place we want to start today? Uh, you don't want to do a retrospective of the season that was? <laughs> yeah, just uh, it was breaking news today that old white men got fired and replaced by da, 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 old white man. Um, <laughs> when I saw Don Maloney's name, I was like, well, okay, like, really? Really? <laughs> Who is Don or what's Don Maloney's uh, previous employment? What's his LinkedIn look like? Uh, so he. He so currently Don Maloney was, I believe, a scout for the Flames, but then um, before that he had stints with the Rangers. Uh, I'm trying to think. Oh no! Don't don't hire scouts as your GM. <laughs> don't, well, I mean, he has a really long track record. He, I think, he was with the Coyotes, um, Rangers. Yeah, yeah, he was pretty much Coyotes and Rangers. So. Um, it's yeah, he's like sixty five years old and had you know played for. I don't know if your resume says the Coyotes. Yeah, you might have. Yeah. There might be some fraud or some concerns or just some uh, really bad decision making. Can, can we just quickly pour one out uh, for Calgary? Because I, I think we were here. We were here a year ago. Um, I knew where I was when the Matthew Kachuk trade went down. Um, 
Weren't we mm-hmm. both at uh, the first night of Gita and Reed's wedding? No, that was like the day before. <laughs> right. Either we the were there when Huberto. Or... I was there when Huberto got resigned. <laughs> yeah, that was insane. Um, so yeah, I mean, we were here a year before, being like, I don't know if they're worse, but they're they might be kind of better because uh, Mackenzie Weger and then uh, Jonathan Huberto decided to score as many points as Brock Besser this year. And uh, that's the end of that. And his extension kicks in, and Weger's extension kicks in, even though Mackenzie Weger's really good. Um, and yeah, now the now I mean, as much as we want to har- harp on the Vancouver Canucks, like guys, look at the cat commitments that the Calgary Flames have: in Nazem Kadri, Jonathan Huberto. Uh, they still got Jacob Markstrom, you know, for what two or three years, three years or whatever left at, at six million dollars. Um, the general sentiment I'm I'm hearing online, I kind of agree with, is that Brad Tree Living, who was let go today, wasn't the problem, mm-hmm. but he also uh, clearly was not going to be the solution either. Um, but I also am nervous for Flames fans that, considering how much pull and maybe how invisible Daryl Sutter is, that he becomes the uh, head coach and GM in a Iron Mike Keenan like situation and uh, makes things even worse. <laughs> happens in like calgary all the time yeah a setter gets both jobs a setter gets fired a setter gets both jobs <laughs> like, um, yeah. like this is not new yeah There's so a... oh go ahead it, it'll like he'll get fired and then brent will get hired yeah you know there's a whole farm there's a there you know we talk about the tanner pearson tree there's a sutter tree just up the road in viking alberta they'll find another one that has a bit of nhl experience and you just rinse lather repeat and calgary and vancouver sit in that lovely mushy middle that they all love to sit in it, it's like, like clockwork. ultimately like brandon's gonna end up behind a bench <laughs> <laughs> it's just gonna be a the, the calgary sutters yeah. um uh, I mean, just in terms of that, like, can you get, like, imagine, like, what what if they, like, re- really lean into the Daryl Sutter thing? What if they just re- re-sign Milan Lucic? Because, like, if you if you look at Milan Lucic's usage, like, this season, it's n- nuts. He's getting, like, first-line minutes, playing with De- De- Hubert and all this stuff. He's like, oh, yeah, he's a Daryl player. I'm like, does Daryl still think that, like, the iPod doesn't exist? You know, like you think it's 2004 and we're all on, uh, we're like, you know, he's asking people for their ICQ. <laughs> you know, what, what's going on? But uh, yeah, no, pour one out for Calgary. Um, and I hope uh, Brad Tree Living goes and manages like a, a Boston pizza. <laughs> Uh, so let's, you know, we talked about Tree Living getting fired. It was Black, it, you know, Black Friday turned into black a Black Weekend. Um Penguins fired Brian Burke and Ron Hextall and their assistant GM Chris Pryor, which... Did you, um, did you guys... Okay, I, I know you guys are the ones... Or Ryan mooches off my athletic. Um, <laughs> I'm assuming you guys didn't read the, the kind of the Ron Hextall eulogy article on the athletic. Uh, you sent me that one uh, that one screen grab that was very telling, but maybe recite it for the, uh, uh, I mean, I, for I, the I, class. I, yeah, I mean, I can't recite it off. Well, okay, vamp for a second, and I'll recite it. I'll, um, I'll find it, and I'll, I'll it's, recite it. It's funny, it as class. Arash brings it up, it basically mm-hmm. sounded almost identical to what Bobby Clark said in that damning podcast um, when he was talking about how Ron Hextall did his job, the decisions he made, um, right. you know, which rang very true rang very similar to how uh benning and and wisebrod kind of did their job like (laughs) let's just we'll we'll take care of this we'll figure it out don't worry about anybody else and like you know hextall was an agm with the los angeles kings and and he and they won a stanley cup and and he he was able to turn that into a general manager's job and because he was a hockey player he gets it for he gets a lot of chances and he kind of did the exact same thing in Pittsburgh in an insanely short amount of time. And yeah, based on the decisions that were made at the deadline and going into this season and with a goal to make the playoffs and be a contender, like yeah, that's a that's a fireable offense, I'd say. Yeah, so uh mm, yeah. Sorry, uh so yeah, the article was uh by Josh Yoey, um, of the Athletic, and it was a scathing 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 article and this was a passage that i 
I sent to uh, a, a, a few a few people, but I'll, I'll recite it here. Hextall is one of the worst general managers in franchise <laughs> history. He may have w- destroyed the Penguins with his ghastly record of player transactions. It's easy to say that Hextall is a fool, and surely this explains why he stunk as a general manager. Maybe. More than anything, though... Hextall was a weakling during his time as a uh, as the Penguins general manager. Tough guy Hextall, the go- goalie with an attitude, rolled over and let his assistants make decisions. He let his players make decisions. He let fans make decisions. He sat quietly in his office all day while the rest of the organization was fading away. Hextall's decision making was more than enough to warrant his dismissal. His lack of guts made it a no brainer. Whoever replaces Hextall will have their hands full. Major damage has been done. Hopefully, when asked for a plan by Fenway Sports Group, the new general manager will at least be able to explain the plan and then have the guts to see that plan all the way through, regardless of what it is. That would be progress. The last two years have been nothing but a once great team fading into the night, a cowering general manager guiding them there one day at a time. That that's that is that is more I can't recall anything in Vancouver being that. Like I I, I understand that um we have oh Vancouver media is real tough. I don't know if Vancouver media is real tough. I think Ma- Vancouver media is um they play the game. They play the game better than any market plays the game. And Vancouver they, media was like he seems like a really nice guy. And he maybe he's just not fit for that role. Ron Hextall in Pittsburgh. This guy's the worst. He's terrible. He is not competent enough for this in the least bit. Yeah. He should not exist. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 insane. Um, and you you take into consideration like Ron Hextall making the trade for Michael Granlund, in where yeah. he trades a second round pick for a player um, that was getting bailed out by his goaltender, which inflated his on ice metrics. He has f- two more years left at five million dollars, and like, if you wanted to get get Michael Granlund, like, they should have paid you to take Michael Granlund, but you paid them a second, so it was very Jim Benning esque. But um, like, I pitching you guys this, uh, I'm just really curious. Um, like, none of like anything. What I just read, we would never hear this in Vancouver, like at least mo- modern today. Like, I don't, I, think, I don't so. think I don't think well, anyone would no. have the guts to actually write something like that i hope i don't get in trouble for saying this but i feel like there's a lot of media here who's afraid that their credentials will be taken away whereas Mm, pittsburgh's like a pittsburgh's a harsh blue collar town and you're not covering honestly like it's not even hockey that you really want to be covering Mm -hmm. they have a football team and baseball team a basketball (laughs) team probably a nascar vehicle (laughs) (laughs) oh i got i got assigned to the penguins beat ah Boo! I was gonna. Ah, man, I'm not. I'm not covering the uh, the Old Spice uh, NASCAR yeah. car. I gotta. I gotta cover Sidney Crosby this week. I, I I agree. I agree with Gita like a hundred percent. Yeah, me too. There's this fear that um, I I recall um, oh, what 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 it was one of the pressers. It might have been like one of the Rutherford early Rutherford pressers when stuff was going down. Oh, it was around when Bruce got fired. Mm-hmm. And Jim was brought out, and we had heard, "Oh, the Vancouver media—they're gonna—they're gonna take it. They're gonna take it to school. They're gonna really, you know, go after it." Um, they didn't. The only person <laughs> who did was Farhan Lalji, because Farhan's a, kind of a G, like works for TSN. And he's like, "You're not firing me. I'm, I work for TSN. There's no <laughs> way. I have. I'm gonna say whatever I want. Oh, you're gonna fire me." Whatever, I'm just gonna go to the. I'm gonna go to football where I actually like it. Whatever. Um, yeah, it was just so interesting reading that. Where like I, I feel for Pittsburgh. Like that's just like a Tuesday, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and it's mm-hmm. correct. Like it, it, it's absolutely correct. Like Ron Hexall in his time in Pittsburgh, dud. And then in Vancouver, man. Like think about all the stuff we've been through. And I don't know. I don't know if we've ever had anything even remotely like that. Did Brian Burke not have any oversight or input there? Um, Because he's a far better general manager than Ron Hextall. Yeah, I mean, geez. Um, I think that the setup was like Brian. Brian was more of like a president. um, And then, yeah, yeah, yeah. And and that he was the face. (laughs) Like he would, you know, he would. He was the one that was always doing uh, media availabilities and um, talking about like his his 
props to Brian for talking so much about mm-hmm. Pride Night and backing it up around the league when that that was absolutely an issue. Um, right. But yeah, like 100 percent, man, I from Ron Hexel's history from, again, being a Flyers fan. Um, here came this guy who is a folk legend in Philadelphia and then just shows you like just because you played the game does not translate and then he had his like la time too what was oh man i forgot there was like a oh there's the trevor lewis draft story i think i like he 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 went to i think yeah he either went to la or he went to philadelphia and when he did he took the draft list with him and then he drafted oh yeah 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 he was in la drafted trevor lewis Mm -hmm. um and Bobby Clark got super pissed off because he's like, we wanted Trevor Lewis. <laughs> what the, like, what the F? He has our draft list. And then right. I think Philly ended up drafting Claude Giroux. <laughs> mm. Because Ron Hexel was like, oh, woof. back, back, back in my hometown, they wanted Trevor Lewis. We should take that guy. <laughs> and then Philly's like, ah, oh, God. Well, because if you remember that, I think that's the same draft where they, uh, Bobby Clark went up and he's like, he forgets Claude Drew's name. Oh, that's right. Yeah, right. He's like, who are we drafting? Trev- yeah, there's, Trevor there's actually. It's he's not a forgetful Freddie. There's legitimate reasons why it's like we're changing our picks now. Yeah, I yeah. totally. Right. Um, well, karma. Other, yeah, karma. Speaking yes. Of karma. Speaking of karma, I say we dive into the Eastern Conference uh, playoff picture. Um, you know, if you're if you're a follower of the Maple Leafs or the Tampa Bay Lightning, you know this day has been coming for six months now probably a year ever since the day after game seven of last year um but let's dive into this Mm -hmm. uh the best team in nhl history your 2022 23 boston bruins they finish they have the president's trophy um they're taking on the the florida panthers uh who are your second wild card team uh bruins had the best pk in the nhl 87.3 percent uh panthers had the 23rd one Season series, Boston won it 2-1-1. One, and one. As uh, all the talk that goes into this is the President's Trophy curse, uh, the Bruins won their President's Trophies in 2014 and in 2020, and uh, mm-hmm. both resulted in second-round exits. And came out today, Jim Montgomery, uh, head coach of your uh, Boston Bruins, uh, there is a non-COVID illness going around, so it's maybe some sort of flu, and uh, several players are sick. So yeah. it could be an mm-hmm. opportunity for Florida to steal a game, uh, but I don't, I don't see that uh, being uh, too much of a likelihood. I feel like this one is going to be over quick. Mm-hmm. I feel like Boston will. Uh, uh, Alex Lyon, the goalie for Florida, has been a lovely little uh, positivity, a little find. I feel a, like a he cute, might... a cute little Andrew Hammond run. Yeah, um, and and he single handedly won my uh, fantasy league. So thank <laughs> you. <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, I agree. It, it'll be, I, I, I feel like, uh, forward wise, there's depth there, but, um, goaltending's instability, um, mm-hmm. that defense, I don't, again, Florida's defense, I'm not sure if they can kind of withstand the, the, the patience and the puck pressure that the Boston Bruins present. And yeah, I, I had like five or six, I think like Florida, I don't, I don't think Florida's bad. I, I'm really excited to see. Brad Marchand, Matthew Kachuk, like, oh yeah, try to out rat each other. That'll be fun, <laughs> right? The rat like bowl, that, yeah, the rat. <laughs> oh, dude, could you imagine if someone made a poster and they're like, "Welcome to the rat bowl"? Might have to. <laughs> it's like Charlie Kelly, King do it. Yes, do it. Yes, I will get get on my laptop and I will Photoshop that right away. But yeah, I have, I have it. Um, I have Boston in in five or six. You got to pick one or the other. Okay, uh, Boston and six. <laughs> Boston and six. Uh, Gita, what are your thoughts about this series? This is um, this is a Boston team that you can't. You know how usually we hate the Boston Bruins. This is a team you're like, I can't hate you. Mm. Yeah, they're they're quite likable. The uh, the hype the the NHL hype machine behind Patrice Bergeron's likely last go around has kind of warmed up to you. And and Brad Marchand refusing to pay eight dollars for a blue check mark. Like, how can you on Twitter? How can you? not respect that so i agree yeah, with you. so like like camilla parker bulls they've rehabbed their their um <laughs> their, <laughs> oh my god so they've rehabbed their reputation <laughs> she's rehabbed her reputation really 
Uh, Gita, who do you got in this series? I've got I've got Boston. And I'll, how many? I'll be I'll generously say five. Okay, and I'm gonna get I'm gonna get really saucy. Oh my god! I'm gonna god. say Boston and four. And I feel like that's going to uh, hype up the, or it's going to intensify the rat bowl. And, you know, because nothing's going well did, for the Kachucks. Did, didn't did, don't you just said they had the flu. You're not giving like a one game buffer for Boston to like get over I'm, the flu. I'm surprised he's not taking them in three. Yeah. <laughs> listen, I w- listen. I don't know if you know anything about <laughs> basketball. But there was this guy that had the flu, and then he had a really good game in the playoffs. I can't remember who his name, who he was, or what is what team he played for. But they talk about the flu game. Yeah. So this will be the flu game for whoever that was in history. <laughs> and Ryan has watched the Last Dance many a times, and he doesn't understand <laughs> that it actually wasn't the flu; it was food poisoning, because Jordan ordered pizza at like 3 a.m. and like five guys ended up ordering the same pizza the, here's the pizza. your pizza <laughs> here's your pizza your airness um uh yeah no okay let's right, go right. in 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 three okay boston in three Sorry. boston in three Hur- the carolina hurricanes this isn't off, easy this is easy written off by a rash oh. uh we'll take on the first wild card team bo horvat and Mark Bar- matt barzell they're new york islanders Carolina took the series season series three to one. Big injury. Um, Svechnikov, Andre Svechnikov, will not play for Carolina. Patches Max Pacioretty also is injured, though he's he she ain't what she used to be. As much as we love Patches, I don't understand. Okay, we let's have Hang a on. quick. I am ah, so ah. I am so upset with this Max Pacioretty slander, Ryan. Ugh. Most uh, boring superstar in NHL history. He's not even a superstar. He's just like, a I rest my case. Okay. Oh, my God. <laughs> this, this guy, Ryan had one charming incident with the border security person uh, talking about hockey, and now he's let his ego expound upon him the, the strength of a million dying stars. Yeah, and you now know, he's, we, a hot take. he's a hot take well, machine. When we're coming back from Seattle on Sunday... The border guard on coming into Canada asks, how do we all know each other? And so I, I cite, you know, how I know Michael, another ride in a rash. And the, and the border guard's like, so you do a hockey podcast together? Who's going to win it? And uh, <laughs> I said Dallas or Vegas, which is my opinion. And he's yeah. like, well, I'm a Boston fan. And I'm like, listen, there's no, like, it's a good team. I just don't, there's just a lot of things and hurdles in the East that could go this way. Anywho. Having a carload of that Motley crew, having having come back with a car loaded full of merchandise and Trader Joe's uh, purchases, because of this hockey dialogue, no, no, we didn't get set inside. Nobody popped the trunk. We just got waved on through. So I was surprised works you pretty didn't good. give him one of our cards. I didn't have any, and I also thought about how it's a bad look to reach into my front pocket for something. No, you're white. You can do that. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> they they assume you're giving him a lollipop as they do in your culture. Uh speaking of lollipops, uh Hurricanes had the best Corsi in the NHL, 60 point uh 38, uh second best power play. Um the Islanders had the 19th best and and 9th best respectively. Um cr- crazy to think that Jess Berry C- Cockton and the Emmy uh is their lead was their leading goal scorer since February 1st, 24 mm-hmm. points in 32 games. Uh, and of course, most importantly, this is the series featuring two of Sebastian Ajos, one for the Islanders and one for the range, uh, for the Hurricanes. All eyes are on Barzell. All eyes are on Bo Horvat. This is Bo Horvat's first taste of, no, he, he had some playoff hockey against Calgary. This is, this is Bo Horvat's flu game. Right? <laughs> am, I, am I doing it? Game. Am I doing it? Everyone has the flu. <laughs> Horvat uh, had an amazing bubble run. Uh, really curious to see how he performs with the fans and uh, that he loves so much. But I don't, I don't feel too positive about the Islanders. I think it's going to be seven game series, and I'm going to take mm. Carolina. Uh, Gita, what are your thoughts on this going see, into it? See, I would have said this is Bo Horvat's President's Trophy, and he's going out in the first round. <laughs> <laughs> I'm. Uh... I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Carolina, but I'm gonna say Carolina in six. 
Nice. Nice and safe, dominant. They'll finish it. They'll they'll eliminate the Islanders in front of those fans that Horvat loves so much. Rash, what about It'll you? It'll be an afternoon game because it's the Islanders, <laughs> and you're like, oh, it's this game's over by 1 o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> Rashi, who are you picking? Uh, I am going uh, Islanders in seven. Oh um, no, no! I mean, this is the. I mean, this is not a. This is not a spicy take. A lot of people believe this, but um, yeah, I think with the injuries on on the in the forward group for Carolina, um, the Canes are starting Auntie Ranta instead of Freddie Anderson, which is a good idea. But at the same time, Auntie Ranta is like one hip movement away from being out for five years. Um, I just don't, I just think if Carolina, Carolina can win the series, if they take a early lead and just snut to just get through Ilya Sorokin and somehow, um, with, you know, their up tempo system or something, you know, end the series early, if this series goes past like f- five games, it's. I, I think the odds for Carolina winning drastically drop off because you're you look at the Islanders as much as unsexy as they are, as like really you're looking at Bo Horvat having nine points and like Islanders fans are like no that's pretty good for us, um, <laughs> yeah with Matt Barzal all coming back like I I don't know I I they have and they also have Ilya Sorokin who's who's top three goaltender in the in the NHL and probably should have won the Vesna Trophy um, as much as I agree. people want I agree to with you, Rash, have there. Linus Allmark to win. Uh, this series, we're going to talk about the most in the next episode and maybe the episode after that. Um, mm-hmm. Let's let's pl- I mean, let's not spend too much time on this. Maple Leafs are playing the Lightning two years in a row. Um, mm-hmm. uh, season series is 2-0-1 for Toronto. The Leafs have the most consecutive exits in NHL history. Uh, the Bolts aren't as deep as they used to be. They ain't as fast as they used to be. Tanner Jeannot was not doing what they expected him to do. Um, a boatload of new bowl uh boatload of new buds tampa or toronto maple leafs my god um gita who are you taking in this series um uh, is will history finally be made and sportsnet will finally have a second round series to cover yeah the the lightning i want to say the lightning were going to be tired this year that's a lot of winning and a lot of long long seasons mm. they've gotten under their belt i'm gonna give it to the leafs in six yeah that's a good pick i also am thinking uh leafs in six i am ready for change i am ready for the salary cap to go up because my god if the leafs play four home playoff dates in the second or third round um escrow won't be a thing anymore the nhl will make all their money back and I'm ready yeah. for it. I'm ready for a new narrative, but I will laugh. Rash, if they you? lose, oh. hold on. If they lose, they deserve to lose for not learning their lesson. You, <laughs> like, you can't. You can't learn your lesson 16 years in a row. <laughs> I just don't know what we're doing here. That's the damnest that, thing. That, that kind of sounds like my my siblings. It's like they're in their 40s, and it's like you know what? They haven't learned it by now, or they haven't learned their life lesson now. Maybe they're just not going to learn it. And you just, like, it is what it is. Because well, going back to talking about our, our uh, old white men always getting jobs, nice. like as soon as Hextall was fired, um, there was all that talk about, oh, the Leafs better like get Dubas signed. But why would the Penguins want Dubas to come in and do what he's done for the last 20 years in, <laughs> in Toronto? I, yeah, I love, I love the dialogue is like, Kyle Dubas might get fired and then immediately hired by an even a just as respected NHL franchise. That's a punishment right there. <laughs> yes. Amen. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I, the lightning are, uh, they're less deep. Um, they got a lot of miles on them. Um, Tanner Janot was not, you know, was not the acquisition they, they, they wanted him to be. Um, he's also injured. I, man, Leafs got to win. They just got to You just got to Like, come on. Like, this is this is great. You're the 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 one bugaboo or the goose bump in your closet lost a little bit of its sheen. You know, like it's the Wizard of Oz. Like you, instead of both cor- curtains being drawn and seeing like the old man like, with the microphone, it's like you got to peek in and be like, oh, there's some cracks in this armor. So, <laughs> um, I'm yeah, I'm gonna go Leafs in six. But if it goes to a game seven, you know. Oh man, <laughs> that's all why we're picking. Win six. it in six. You have to win it in six. Do not go to a game seven. No, 
You have to, you have to win it in Tampa on Game Six Did, because you, it's, especially if you go up three one. Like you know, you know that uh, feeling we had, guys. We had when we won Game Five um, against the yeah. Bruins with the Lapierre goal, yeah. and we all knew they have to win Game Six. Yeah, yeah. Because if yeah. they do, they're not they, they can they're not going to win if they don't win Game Six. And I, look what happened. I love yeah. it. Be- uh, big rivalry series to close out the East Devils uh, two versus Rangers three. Uh, the Devils have the Ranger or the season series three zero and one. Uh, Rangers got the seventh best power play. Devils the thirteenth. Uh, all the big name ads. We're talking Patrick Kane. We're talking Vladimir Tarasenko. We're talking Tyler Mott. Mm-hmm. All the household names in the NHL. Um, it's going to be mean. It's going to be salty. Devils uh, paid a lot for Timo Meyer. Um, both Hughes boys will be playing and the third Hughes brother will be watching as Quinn Hughes said in the presser, he's going uh, out East to watch the devils play. Um, you know, what Double are you t- testing beers, obviously. Well, I mean, yeah, if you're a brother, if you're a brother and you're an NHL brother and your brother is more successful than you, you go to a game and you just get hammered pocket beers, you know, bag. Don't of- be there with Keith Kachuk. <laughs> <laughs> Please go to this series. It's better. God, I'd love to see Quinn and Keith Kachuk <laughs> just just hammered in a in a luxury suite. Uh, Gita, who are you taking in this in this Devils Rangers series? Well, I had forgotten how good the Rangers have been, um, like built to be. But I'm still taking the Devils, and I'm taking the Devils in six. Hell yeah! Nice. Uh, very satanic number. Um, I too uh, am pulling for the Devils. I think it is going to be done in five, and we're going to see uh, our New York Rangers. Damn it, guys. You're all supposed to take six. <laughs> yeah, it's Devils, six, six, six. Okay, okay yeah, <laughs> I'll take the Devils in six. Rash, what about you? Um, hmm. This is really tough because, uh, man, it, both teams have acquired players um, and the season series. You know what? I'm going to... I'll say Rangers in seven. Oh, damn. I just think like Igor Shesterkin's there, um, and then they mm-hmm. have depth, and the uh, the 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 Devils are still young, and their time will come. But uh, yeah, yeah, it'll be fun. It'll be a really fun series. But I don't know. I always get, get edge to goaltending. I, it yeah. is the playoffs. Let's head out west. We just experienced playoff fever in this town. The Colorado Avalanche, not that town. They um, they won the division. They're taking on the wild. Uh, they're taking on the Kraken, who are wild card one. Season series though, Seattle took it two zero and one. Land Gabriel Landeskog has missed the whole season. They're going to miss the playoffs. Kale McCarr is also not one hundred percent, but he's playing. Um, we all know what the Kraken's goaltending is like, and the Kraken mm-hmm. have. Uh, the 21st ranked PK and power play, which isn't the greatest thing. Um, it's going to come down to, to crack and goaltending. I find because they don't have very much of it. We know how mm-hmm. their games, they win, you know, these are going to be high scoring games. I feel. And if, if Colorado can take, um, if Colorado can find, uh, you know, can outscore them, they'll be fine. But I, I'm feeling spicy. And for whatever reason, wait, I'm going wait, to take wait, wait, Seattle. What? I'm getting silly. I'm taking this, Seattle in seven games. I was going to say, this is Grubauer's revenge. <laughs> <laughs> no. Ar- Ar- Arash has gotten up and left. I don't know if it's out of disgust. Bad, Ryan. Bad. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Arash, who are you picking in this series? We do not. We are not a click-based podcast, Ryan. You don't. You don't just. You went to Climate Pledge and you fell in love with that arena. <laughs> I fell in love with the merchandise, the color scheme, <laughs> the lack of uh, representation. Oh, here's one thing. We were at the we were at the Mariners game on Saturday night. Gita saw a handful of Kraken jerseys. None of them had yeah. actual players on them. They were all like novelty jerseys or like. Bill 69 on the back. Like nothing. There's no McCann or Everly or Maddie Beneers jerseys out there in the general public that we saw. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a little. Because they, little they like the team, but they don't care about the name on the back because this is all team. That's right. They play for the jersey in the front. <laughs> yeah, well, it, <laughs> they, they, need, they need that one guy. And so it might be Matt, uh, Maddie Beneers. 
But they, Maybe Shane it's not Ray. him yet. It's there's it's yeah. none of them yet. So they they need that one guy who will come in and be like grunge as hell, <laughs> and uh, you know just pl- playing freaking Pearl Jam or whatever. Um, who are you taking, Arashi? Yeah, I'm taking Colorado in five. What Ryan? Wow. Yeah. Do you not understand that like Martin Jones isn't that great and Philip Grubauer ain't that great? <laughs> Do you realize it's the Colorado Avalanche and our Terry Lekkonen's back now and Kale McCarr and Josh Manson? Ryan, I'm just Oh god. Do you, hey. you have time to you have time to change it now before the, Seattle and 4. <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh, no. I was gonna say I, I haven't picked the sweep. None of us have picked the sweep, so I'm going avalanche in four. Nice. There we go. There's got to be a sweep. Yeah, there has to be. This a is a polarizing one. I'm very curious based on our our predictions. Uh, let's head to uh, the Vegas Golden Knights. They won the Pacific. Uh, they're taking on the Jets. Uh, the Knights swept the very tightly wound, stressed out Jets. Um, all the rumors that this is the last hurrah in Winnipeg as a lot of our key players, either their contracts are up or they are approaching being up, making them trade bait. Um, Mark Stone is skating again and going to play game one. Uh, and uh, Bois- Laurent Boissot, a name I cannot pronounce, has a 927 save percentage and a 2.17 goals against average, uh, which is a small sample size, but better than uh, Connor Hellebuck. I don't feel any. I don't feel too positive about the the Jets. And as much as I love Rick Bonus, I feel like the, this is that his team is going to crash and burn quick. I got Vegas in six games, mm. and they'll lose well, the it. Jets- hmm? Sorry, no. I was going to say the Jets could have very easily been Calgary in this circumstance. Totally, totally. They were that close to it, and you know, if the Canucks didn't win a shootout game against Cowtown. It could be Calgary getting fed to the slaughter. Um, I feel really bad for Jets fans because of how good the team has been and how good the fans have been, but you know their lack of success, and I feel like a, a heartbreaker is coming. So mm-hmm. Vegas and six. Gita, what about you? Uh, Vegas and five. This is like a very good Vegas team that like recu- re- regrouped. <laughs> yep. Nice. Regurgitated. Yeah. <laughs> they, well they regurgitated all of the uh their injured players oh they're all back and they're all healthy for game one great great Dr. medical Jack staff Jack Eichel knows what he's doing <laughs> Arash what about you um well, okay uh I have Vegas in six uh, as well um the Jets have not they they have not been the Golden Knights this year so they were swept in the 3-0 series mm-hmm. um and yeah, with Mark Stone coming back, I, I just feel like uh, Winnipeg his Winnipeg might come out and like win Game One, you know, because they've been playing playoff hockey for like the last month or two. Yeah. Um. But at the end of the day, um. The, yeah, I just uh, I I I think Vegas is quietly having the weirdest uh, conference winning se- season <laughs> in uh, NHL history in a very weird way. It's just like no one's talked about Vegas, and then you look at the standings like. Oh mean? wait, maybe we should have talked about Vegas. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe we should. This we feels should like be- a Tampa Bay uh, Cup win year. Maybe we should have thought about them a bit more. Maybe we should have. Uh, Gita's got a appointment at the top of the hour, so we're gonna rapid fire these last two rounds, and then we'll <laughs> we'll take a breather. Um, Dallas Stars versus the Minnesota Wild. This is the Green Series. Dallas uh, took the series two zero and two. Um, they got a top line that's pretty damn dynamic, led by uh, Jason Robertson's hundred and nine points. Jamie Benn found the fountain of youth with 77 points. And uh, traditional hunk Tyler Sagan is kind of sitting with his bad contract, only putting up 50. Uh, stars at the best power play. Uh, fifth best power play, I should say. Sorry. And I have the Stars winning the Stanley Cup this year. So I'm going to take Dallas in uh, six games. Rash, what about you? Uh, I'm going to get Dallas in seven. I think this is... This is two defensive uh, defensive juggernauts going against each other, and um, yeah, I, I don't know. It's, I'm gonna t- it's a toss. I think this is a toss up. It, this is such a fifty fifty series, like especially with Joel Erickson Eck is coming back apparently. Yeah, oh, yeah. Nuts. There's there's a lot of there's a lot of moving parts that are coming and coming back to that and yeah. for those rosters. Kita, right, what about you? Oh, I got Dallas in five. I, too, have Ooh. Dallas going to the Stanley Cup finals. Um, not winning, but going to the finals. Nice. nice. 
have we all filled out our pucks on net uh, bracket challenges? Yes, we have. I have not. <gasps> So I have to create an account. Oh, to automatically. I know Michael's listening, but it automatically <laughs> tried to fill in Michael's email and password. Uh, that and is we the... have no idea why. We have no clue. That is one of the more broken sites I've been to. It's you're, it's an <laughs> awful site. But yeah, get your get your picks in. I think you have. I think you have like a day or so, but we're doing a little contest okay. there on the Patreon. And um, finally, uh, Edmonton Oilers, they're taking on the LA Kings for a second straight year. Um, Oilers had the best single season power play in NHL history, 32.4%. Uh, the season series was tied two to two. Um, Kevin Fiala is a big ad. Um, and so was uh, Jonas Corposalo for the Kings in efforts to topple the, um, the Edmonton Oilers. Gita, who are you taking in this series? I'm going to take the Oilers in six, but this is also the my my upset series, so it could be the Kings in seven if it does go the other way. Yeah, I could definitely see that. And um, these are these are two very different teams than the teams that played each other in the first round last year. I think it's going to be a hell of a fun series. And you know, it's if if Stu Skinner can uh, maintain. Uh, I, as a rash always likes to quote, if you can get that nine fifteen save percentage, oh, that, the... that nine, give this team <laughs> a nine ten goalie, they'll win every cup. Just not even you. They need a Grant Fear. They just need someone who'll just make the goddamn. I love. I get into my. <laughs> I get into my torts here. We need someone to make a goddamn occasional save. Twenty five percent of the twenty five percent. I'm getting real tight at the twenty five percent. Roll Brooksy. I'm I'm gonna take Edmonton in seven. I think there's gonna be a good scare by the Kings who yeah. are a little bit under the radar, but Edmonton should win this and I, I feel like they have they've got a ways to go in this playoffs. Finally, Arash, what about you? Yeah, Edmonton in seven. Uh I actually agree with you full on. Um uh, it's gonna get, come down to a game and then I have to give the game like a, a one game playoff to McDavid and Dreisaitl. I just feel like, you know, they'll go they'll play twenty eight minutes and they'll just do what they do. Nice. Well, on that note, we got all our picks in. I'll post them on uh, on our socials. Uh, we are underway for the most uh, important contest of the year, which is who's better at picking winners. Uh, Gita, well, I appreciate you uh, sitting in on this matinee podcast up until uh, up until now. We take a break, and uh, we'll come back with sauce it and toss it. So, uh, Keats, thanks for joining us. Oh, you should listen to the edit point when your Amazon truck arrived. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, listen to the edit point. It she get it get it set the line of the episode. Pizza on the Swiss Alps or something, you know, some some something real nice. Quick edit point. I think somebody just knocked on our door. Wait me one second. In this economy, oh, 12, I wanted 30. to say tree living his best life. Oh my god! I can't <laughs> believe we missed that bit. Ryan doesn't even know we missed that bit. He's not, he doesn't even understand. Maybe we should just tell him to keep it in, and then in the edit, be like, "Listen back." Hello, everyone. I want to thank you for uh, getting to this far of the podcast. Hope you uh, agree. Maybe you disagree with our with our first round predictions. If you want to support the show monetarily, you can head on over to patreon.com slash pucks on net pledge a mere couple of bucks, five American dollars to be exact. That will get you immediate access to our video podcast immediately. You can get five minutes for paying. You can watch all of our Rock'em Sock'em April content. You can join the Pucks on Net Discord. And you can watch the latest uh, Ryan and Arash go to a sporting event vlog as we went to a Mariners game on Saturday night. And if you don't want to support the show monetarily, that's perfectly fine and accessible. Acceptable. <laughs> but I will say that every dollar that uh, we get uh, through Patreon gets reinvested right back into the podcast. And it pays for hosting fees, um, Adobe Creative Suite, uh, mic replacements, uh, merchandise, you know, we and and we also give it back to you through the Pucks on Net Fantasy Hockey League. So if you've been hearing this, me drab on for years about joining Patreon, well, hey, maybe this is the time to do it. If not, you that's totally fine. You can go to youtube.com slash pucks on net. You can hit follow. You can hit subscribe. You can smash the bell. You can watch our clips. You can watch just about everything there, video, podcast, audio, podcast, and clips. You can also follow us on 
Apple Podcasts and Spotify, you can give us a five star rating and a positive review on both those. You can share our Instagram, you can share in your Instagram stories our Spotify podcast that allows you to do that. You can also follow us on Instagram, you can follow us on TikTok, you can interact with us just about everywhere. Find our link tree, hit follow on everything, tell a friend, retweet our podcast, let us know if you think it's good. If it's not, we want to hear from you. What's happening on this TV over here? To see your grandson stop bullying me. Well, let's hope that we're not in a situation like that. Let's head back to the show. All right, Arashi, are you ready for uh, the, the hit game that's sweeping the nation? Is it the Major Baseball Association? <laughs> <laughs> Major oh, League baseball. baseball presents Sauce It or Toss It. Nice. All right, Arashi. Sauce oh, sorry, or sorry, 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 sorry. Quick question. Oh. Should we have like a, for Sauce and Toss It, should we have like a pitch clock? <laughs> I, I would love, <laughs> Arash, I love you, but I would love a pitch clock on Arash. <laughs> yeah, hey, 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 what would you do without me? You I'd know, be, I'd be a nothing burger, but I you would you wouldn't even know about Iranian food. You wouldn't even know what a kebab was. Anyway, <laughs> sauce me, baby. Look. Sauce it or toss it, Arash. The Western Conference will win the Stanley Cup. Oh God, no! I'm gonna toss it. Really? I thought, yeah. I think the e- there is just there there are some uh, teams in the East that are f- so frightening. Um. Like I yeah, Boston of course being one, uh the Rangers being another, Toronto, even like if Tampa gets their shit together, like like top when we look at teams top to bottom, um there's just so many teams that have like two to three amazing forwards. They have the one D and they have the one they have the one A goalie. Totally. Right? So like Rangers have Panarin, Zabinajad, Kreider, Kane, Tarasenko, Trocek, whatever. Fox, Shesterkin, whatever, going down. Um, Boston has Boston. So, and, and then when I look at the West, it's just, I don't know, there's some teams that, like, are really good. Like, Edmonton, really good. Um, And that Ekholm trade, oh, my God. Uh, great. Great. Great trade. Amazing trade. Um, But, again, it's like, is Stuart Skinner the 910? Is he the boy? We'll see. <laughs> Sauce it or toss it, Arash. Besser, Garland, Myers will not be traded this offseason. Toss it. There's no way. Wait, wait, are you mean all three? Yeah. Oh, I think one of them comes back. I I, 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 de- I think... I would... From from what I saw, I would expect Connor Garland to be back. I, I know people are, 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 are kind of harping on it, but he played really well um, down the stretch run, and I think... Um, he has experience with Rick Tockett and played the way that Rick Tockett wants him to play. Um, Besser, I, again, I just really think like two years left at six point six, and someone's like, "Hey, he scored fifty five points. Like he's, it's not like he's out there scoring fifteen goals, fifteen assists." And Tyler Myers, um, Tyler Myers is a tricky one just because his bonus kicks in in September. So like, does he start? Like teams are going to be spending their money, um, mm-hmm. but maybe I, I just feel like maybe before the season there's a team that like wants to get under the cap or get wants to get over the cap or whatever or needs like that additional piece and Myers will be flipped for that. Let's hope. Sausage or toss it a rash. Ron Hextall will never be a general manager again. Toss it. Come on, this is the NHL. But he's had Some, two abysmal runs, oddly enough, both in Pennsylvania. I just feel like people are going to be like, well, you know, they just love they love their old glory war, war workhorses. Yeah. You know, they're like, oh, but it's Ron Hextall. Folk he's hero. So You've touched yeah, on it earlier. I agree. It's the folk hero thing, right? Like, you can just, you can screw up. It's like the, pro- it's weird. It almost, it, it's almost like the first round, uh, first round pick syndrome where it's like, uh, players of first round pick will like even into their thirties will be like, he's still got potential. He's a first round pick. He was he was scouted that high for a reason. <laughs> for a reason. It's just, you know I'll <laughs> Hey, you know what? Uh, so uh you know, I, I talked to a few people and uh they told me that uh you should have went in the third round. 
how are you going to react? How are you going to react? <laughs> that's my that's my favorite. We should have a segment called How Are You Going to React where with Babs. I mean, I there's I I'm just thinking of the plethora of mer- merchandising options that are flowing through my brain right now. How are you oh, going to okay. react? How are you going to react? Speaking um, of how are you going to react? Sauce it or toss it, Arash. Toronto wins in 7. 48 hours later, face Boston who's been sitting around for a week after sweeping <laughs> Florida. <laughs> Oh, sauce it to hell, dude. Oh, man. Can you imagine? <laughs> Wait, no. I'm, I'm just clicking it together where I'm like, can you imagine the high of Toronto winning in seven? And that city, like the jubilation of that city. This is, how do I re- re- recognize it? This is like in a video game where you beat the you beat the boss at the end. Yep. And it, like the boss has killed you a bunch of times. And you beat the boss, and people who play Japanese role playing games will know what I'm talking about. Where you beat the boss, and you think that was the last boss, and then after you beat it, it's like actually there was an even greater evil, <laughs> and you're like, what? <laughs> I could barely kill the second to last guy. Now I can't. I gotta fucking kill this last guy. Oh I, man. <laughs> I just like, I just picture like Maple Leaf Square goes off, confetti, people are crying children and their parents are embracing and then it's just like all of a sudden a boston bruins helicopter just comes and they all parachute down like we're yeah. we're here for you like I, I i'll be very happy for them but my god what could be waiting around the bend is gonna squash that it's gonna be one night and they're gonna wake up hung over like we gotta they gotta play the bruins in like 30 hours i i have a sauce toss for you very quick sure this might end up this had this these playoffs have the potential to be one of the best Stanley Cup playoffs of of the modern era. Uh absolutely like sauce. Cup, too. I oh, sauce cool. that. Yeah. There's so many great first round options. Um there's a shitload of second round uh potential second round matchups and there's sneaky teams in the west. There's mm-hmm. very uh dominant teams that were well versed in in the east uh it's there's gonna be a lot and i think the nhl desperately needs it yep hey man Soster toss it a rash nothing tastes better than a gigantic ballpark coors light that costs 25 dollars more thanks to american current uh the u.s exchange rate yeah so i definitely went on my credit card today and found out that those two 24 ounce beers that i bought but like came to 50 dollars. yeah it's it was a fun. kick it was- in the kicking was, the fanny i was glad to do it because you had bought me a beer and i was like all right i gotta be one of the boys man you know <laughs> um but to be fair like <laughs> the reason i was so wasted is because i was like you re- remember you gave you bought me a Coors Light, yeah and then i went up to go get garlic fries and then by the time i went got garlic fries i'm like oh i gotta go get popcorn and like everything else for everyone else and i had time to wait in the line and eat the garlic fries and then I also went and got a beer for you and I. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, I was drinking, and then you went and bought me another beer. Oh, that's not, right. Not, so I had another beer waiting for me. <laughs> so it was like fucking f- 60 ounces of beer, man. It was crazy. Um, I don't know. I'm, One dollar for it. every ounce, it seems. I don't I don't regret it. No. I don't it's, regret it. Yeah. Uh, it's, it, we can't it was do that. We can't do that every, every uh, game, uh, Seattle Mariners game day. But now I realize how baseball players are rich. Because <laughs> there's 40,000 people like, sorry, okay, we're getting out of tangent. But one thing I realized was um, I absolutely understand now that people a lot, like the amount of young people I saw at a baseball game not giving a shit about <laughs> baseball. Yeah. But by, by, by the fact that like the stadium was a giant party. Oh, yeah. Like it was like a club, and you you can buy go buy like a seven dollar ticket, mm-hmm. and then you're inside with like all like all people, everyone just getting wasted. And I was like, this is the best open air club I've ever been to. Yeah, I mean, I spent a whole bachelor party just down by the by the bullpens where we mm-hmm. were for a bit, and just it was one of the best nights ever. Like it is a great time. Mm-hmm. Speaking of great times, Sauster Tossiter Ash, me Ryan's border crossing abilities. Um. I, I would sauce it. Um, 
yeah, you did. You did fantastic. You did great. Um, and uh, I'm just trying to remember. Yeah, like you were very prepared, but very prepared. Like you prepared yourself before, which is so interesting. Because I'm in my head, I'm like, as if I was going over the border, I'd be like, all right, ask me what you need to ask me, man. I got, I'm like, what do you, yeah, I'm staying there. Like, what are you doing? What are you doing in Eugene, Oregon? I don't know. What, what is anyone doing in Eugene, Oregon? <laughs> really? I don't, you know. Um, but yeah, yeah, you did a wonderful job. And uh, thank you. God, Godspeed. Well done. Sauce it or toss it, Arash. The current playoff for the current NHL playoff format does not work, but the old one versus eight isn't the answer either. Uh, what do you mean by it? Can you clarify a little bit? People are so critical of uh, of the playoff format, of the seeding, of the first like round. The card and stuff. And Brad Marchand said he didn't like it. So people want changes, but maybe the the old format of one versus eight isn't the answer either, and something else needs to be done. Um, I mean, I, I'm not really but, uh, butthurt about it. I would love, like, just, again, the crazy – a bird brain in my head um like the idea if the one if the first seed in the conference could pick their opponent mm-hmm. they'd just be like oh yeah you know like it it came down to the last game of the season where colorado started georgiev against i think nashville was it because they didn't want to play minnesota they wanted to make sure they won because they really yeah. didn't want to play minnesota like why don't you just be like yeah pick your poison you know just pick your poison and see how cool that would get you know, like Toronto, like how cool would it be if Toronto like won the conference and they're like, they're like, you know what? Fuck you. Give us Boston. Like, <laughs> and then every, like that would be a baby face move and everyone yeah. would be like, yeah, face your demons. Yeah. Slay that, you know, attempt to slay that dragon. Slay that dragon. And then you don't. And then it's Cody Rhodes all over again. <laughs> the crowd is here. About to blow, blow. Uh, Maybe I was misinformed or I forgot that um, – maybe I'm just not paying attention, but the one-game playoff in the NBA. Yeah, um, the, the play-in game. The play-in game, uh, I, think it's an, I think it's appealing, and yep. I like it, and I think that maybe wild card two in the West and the East could, you know, that that's something you play in for and just – really have that that spicy option so i wouldn't be opposed to that i also i'm not i have no issues with the current play of playoff format either mm-hmm. so i will toss that hey man what a time to be alive uh let's Moon quickly pie. touch on the press conference that's happening right now um for the canucks this is a media availability featuring just talk it and Al- and alvin no yep. jimmy rutherford so it's going to be uh I believe Faber tweeted that it was 10 minutes, and I believe that. It's not, you know, when, when Jim Rutherford was doing, uh, when he was doing media availabilities, it felt like he was a, a stand-up, just kind of riffing, working on his material, mm. like he's got a mixed drink and a cigarette going. A um, couple of quick comments here. Um, oh, during the year, we had conversations, and I respect what he wanted, I, that he wanted to take a step back and wait. Patrick Alvin said of Ethan Bear negotiations. He then mm-hmm. joked, not sure he earned a raise or anything. Drance suggesting that the uh, joke speaks volumes. A GM wouldn't be that winking. Uh, we, we wouldn't be winking like that if talks were touch and go. So yep. maybe alluding to positive conversations with Ethan Bear. And Alvin acknowledged there's some holes they got to fill this summer. And he also stated that they, uh, their preference is to not use buyouts. Yeah. Because I, 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 again, clip this, and I'm just, just my thoughts. I, I just don't, uh, I don't, I, I, I think we've been just told by the swirling, um, swirling kind of ad nauseum take that um, there's no way that the Canucks can move some of their players like there's no way like there's no way someone's taking Brock Besser I don't know like it's two years there's no way someone's taking my Tyler Myers at you know the uh one one year left at six million but actually one million in money owed like I don't I don't think like you know 
does OEL come back and he's still on LTIR? Like maybe you know his foot problem is really bad. Like it, it does go there, and but hopefully Tanner Pearson regains um regains some quality of life and and and, and his issue, his issues are resolved. Tucker Pullman might not come back, and that's more money on LTIR. Um, mm-hmm. I just feel like people are like the Vancouver Canucks need to sell the franchise in order to get cap space. I just don't. I don't <laughs> think it's <laughs> like I think I, I'm like. Why are we? I'm not saying that it's going to be easy, and I'm not saying that it's yeah. a simple solution, but I'm like, can we just, can we not be like the world is always falling down? I don't think the world is that bad. I, I think, yeah, they yeah. need to figure, they're out their 3C spot, and they need to figure out um, depth on defense. Um, again, I'm just going to say, Ivan Barbashev is a winger. He's not a, th- he's not a center. He's a winger. So don't think he's, it's please get Jason, a center. Yeah. But, but he's just, the, it's the Jason Dickinson thing again. Yeah. He's a, he's a winger. He's not a center, but we also have Gavrikov though, <laughs> baby. Now, now we're cooking 27 year old UFA in well, this economy. Well, no, five year deal. He's give him a five year deal. He's 32 at the end of it. Are you, are you fudging my muffin? Um, if I could. are you are you morphing my Megazord right now, Ryan? Uh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you love it. It's great. Um, I think based on what Brock Besser has said, like, you know, he said to be completely honest with you, I don't want to be traded, and he talked about the difficult year and kind of what he went. You know, he basically made a few comments in the yes over the weekend, saying like, I really like it here, and I like the guys here. Um, which when we talk about somebody needs to move and, and Alvin said that there will be changes, like based on the way Canucks lore happens, like he's going to say all that. And then Brock Besser is going to be traded. He's going to be the first one <laughs> and it's going to be, you know, and there'll be, a, it'll be a heel, another heel turn for the Canucks because it's like, they're trading yeah. away a guy that wants to be here, wants to win, has a very touching, um, uh, emotionally charged, you know, backstory in the last few years. So, I fully expect him to get traded and just like uh, such a heel turn by this, this front office. Yep. Hmm. Yeah. I just, uh, yeah, man, I, I don't know. I just don't want to, I just don't want to say that like, Oh, everything's just so doom and gloom. I don't know. Ryan, like, am I crazy? Like, no, it's not, it's not great, but it's not like where it was with Jim Benning. Yeah. It's no. somewhere in this middle and the middle is better than where it was. And then at, at least that's progress in some form. So give them a little bit of credit. Yeah, Open com- your hearts up a little bit. That's all I'm saying. I completely agree with you. Uh, let's head to questions, and then we'll wrap this show up. Wrap it up. Jake in the Discord, nice. based on our weekend rash. Yep. What's a better live experience, baseball or hockey? Both as a fan caring about the game and as a guest enjoying the atmosphere. With Ryan and Gita's perspective on really liking both sports and Arash not being baseball's biggest fan, this could lead to an internet uh, interesting discussion. Mm. Better live experience is the key phrase. Um, oh. Yeah, you touched on that. It is a fun social atmosphere, and you know it is lively, and it's almost anything but about watching the sports. You know, at least in the regular season. While a hockey game is pretty intense, you kind of are in your seat just watching the game closely because it's so fast. And, you know, it's not, it's, you know, the way the intermissions and the TV timeouts are kind of uh, set up. Mm. I don't know if it's the best, the best live experience. Now it's obviously the best. Oh, Stevie, don't, don't, don't move. No, no, no. <laughs> Goodbye, Ryan. It's welcome. Welcome to Patrick Alvento with me, your host, Iranian Patrick Alvento. Right. Like, yeah. I'm going to say... A better live experience is baseball, but in terms of the better sport, it is hockey mm. with uh, with a bullet. Um, I definitely see that baseball is way more fun to attend um, for the activities around baseball. Mm-hmm. Um, I find hockey to be way more intimate, way more personal. Yes. Um there the fact that there's like 18,000 people it it's just it feels there's a bit more connection with the crowd within the crowd yeah um then again i'm only basing this off of the one game that i went to um and like the 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 concept of like scoring so like goal scoring is a 
really big deal in hockey and not to say that it isn't baseball, but baseball is way more frequent. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think it, it's, 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 you just have to kind of pick what, what works for you. I, I, I'm not going to throw any shade against baseball. I had a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, it's just not something that I, I think I would have the energy to do, um, because I enjoy my sports to be more like there's a bit more intimacy in the, in the sport. And I, and for me, hockey is just so like, I can sit in my seat, I can watch the game, I can watch the benches, I can watch everything and I can see the game being played where baseball is kind of like, um, just a slow stewing thing that's going on. And that's great. You just, you just got to figure out what's, what's good for you. Absolutely. Uh, Azur Chief on Twitter. Should I hop on or off the Bedard train now that our chances, the Canucks chances, are slim to none? Hop on, baby. What are you doing? What are you doing? Yeah, hop on. 3.5. Well, it's, 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 it's rigged. No, it's 3%. Dude, come on. We already got them. Get and your, it's rigged. Go to, there's the thing. Go down to the Canucks store. Tell them a rash thing. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, get that Bedard jersey. Just get it. They'll give it to you at a discount. Yeah, that is true. Okay. That's shoot. It's they're already they're already printing Bedard Knight uh, Diwali jerseys, <laughs> in which they're fourteen hundred dollars at least. It's starting. <laughs> Roger R. Smith, cool in one hundred and one. This is a question more for a rash. Is oh. Stephen A. Smith the most annoying person who works for ESPN? Does Max Kellerman still work for ESPN? I think he does. It's for me. It's Max Kellerman because Max Max Kellerman is a. Uh, he did. He he plays the game. Um, I love <laughs> Stephen A. Smith because he's like a master of it. Yeah, right. He knows like he knows why you're tuning in, but at the same time, he doesn't. Um, he, he doesn't. He's not so adamant about being right. Like he, you know, with some people, it's always the dichotomy of um, if you ever run into a discussion or have a discussion with someone and they just want to be right for because they think it's like a battle. Let them be right. Um, but Stephen A. Smith is like, now this is my perspective. This is just me. And oh, you can have that argument, but I ain't gonna have it. LeBron James is a friend of mine. Is a friend, dear friend. You know, like, <laughs> I love that. I love how, like, he just, he's great. Um, ESPN, uh, yeah, Max Kellerman or uh, who's the other guy on first take with Shannon Sharp? Damn, what's his name? I already forgot it. Anyway, but it's probably but a the answer film. is no. He is not the but most. But no, annoying. no, I love Steven Smith. Richard uh, Honeycutt in the Discord. Maybe a segment on Ryan's NHL 23 GM for, or franchise mode team. Uh, How's I it just, going? Just fantastic. I turned down the the injury slider, so uh, Pedersen isn't getting injured every other game because I noticed that was a, a bit of a thing. Uh, I got Connor Bedard. I got no all the guys that we talked about trading. They are they were already traded in the fantasy world that is uh, the EA Sports universe, and uh, Bedard's leading the team in scoring. He's having a great time. Nice. I think this is going to be my question of the week, just because of the potential for it. Uh, blah blah blah. Bird in the Discord. Say teams were allowed to say teams were allowed to bribe Connor Bedard. What could they offer? Uh, what could they offer them specific to their city and locations? So if Connor Bedard, if let's say Connor Bedard was uh, the in part of the Jimmy VC like sweepstakes, where he got they got, oh, they got to pick yeah, and choose okay. wherever they went, collegiate um, thing. I feel like the Vancouver Canucks wouldn't wouldn't have the best way to um, uh, to bribe Connor Bedard because number one, he lives in Lynn Valley. Um, and to get downtown from Lynn Valley for like four o'clock for a seven o'clock game is like would take two hours. Mm-hmm. Um, he's making nine hundred and fifty grand a year, which means he could probably maybe afford Kita's old palatial estate if he you know didn't have a vacation budget. Mm-hmm. And all we can really do is say, do you like to, do you want to surf and swim in the same day? Well, there's one day a year where that might happen, so you know maybe it won't work for Vancouver. Yeah, uh, well, I'm trying to think. I don't know. I just feel that's tough for Vancouver because it's Vancouver and he wants to be here. Um, it's very much the Matt Duchesne pumping his fist that like he gets to go to Colorado. You know, <laughs> um, I don't know. I'll just be like free honey's donuts or something. Like that, so <laughs> I don't know. Come down to Pomegranate. I won't charge you tax, Connor. Yeah, well, like the San. But you're paying full price. No tax. 
You could afford it. I know you make some, you make nine twenty five. Your mom keeps saying that you never went to McDonald's. I know that's bullshit. I saw you outside that Lynn Valley one. I saw it. I saw him. Chicken McNugget Happy Meal. Let's go. I say you're wearing shorts, backwards cap. Fuck you, Connor. I know. <laughs> um, I think Ohio would be like Columbus. They just bribe them with. It costs like nothing to live here. And yeah. um, we're not Cleveland. Nice. <laughs> Could At San least Jose, we're not Cleveland. Could San Jose bribe them in any way? I don't know, like Google stock or something. What's what to happen in San Jose? <laughs> we're come down to San Jose. We're not. Uh, we're not. We're not San Francisco, but we're close. <laughs> and uh, I can't think of much for Anaheim because the cost of living in Orange County it must be very high. And it's I don't know t- Philly. Philly would be hilarious. Be like. Yo, come to Philly. We'll make a man out of you. <laughs> <laughs> Torts is like, yeah, yeah, no, that's what we're going to do. You know, uh, listen, I know uh, I know he's supposed to be good, but can he be a hockey player? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know that. I don't know that. We'll find that answer out very soon. All right, uh, gentlemen, I have, to, uh, I have to call it quits for this press conference. Uh, I do need to take my pregame nap nap. <laughs> pulls the bed out pulls of the wall. Pulls the Murphy, <laughs> the Murphy bed. <laughs> can, uh, someone, can someone please put on the office in the background? I need something to fall asleep to. <laughs> Just anything season three and above. <laughs> season <laughs> anything. Season above one and two. Season three? Yeah, no, uh, season one and two, they didn't, didn't figure out the voice yet, but season three, it's where my comfort zone is. I thought they had it in season two. They did. I know. I'm just <laughs> listen, man. I'm just vamping, man. What do you want me to do? Uh, we'll wrap up the podcast there. Uh, I want to thank everybody for enjoying uh, enjoying it this week. We hope to have this out by uh, before g- game one starts tonight for your uh, whatever series you're watching. Uh, but we'll wrap this up. We're gonna head on over to Patreon again. If you want to listen to five minutes or paying, you can do that there. You can also uh, watch our travel vlog. Arash and I are sports travel vloggers now. And you can watch us go down to Seattle and catch an M's game, which they won 9-2. to two. God love it. Um, Sports. George Kirby with the win. Uh, Sports. So, so we'll, we'll wrap it up there. Thank you very much. And, uh, yeah, Arash, any closing remarks? Any five words that you can close on? Sports. What? Sports. Just I said sports again. Just get to five minutes for paying. Right? Just come on, wrap it up. It's like the border crossing. When like you obviously like that's my one critique with the border thing. Okay, Ryan. Before we close out the show, yeah, it was like you already had the crossing in the pocket. And you kept talking. Yeah, pal, you already got the green light. He's waiting for an out. Just be like, ah, well, we'll see. You don't have to be. Like, well, actually, would you like us to pull out our Yahoo fantasy pickers and maybe <laughs> run down and break it out? Like, yeah, the fuck. Well, I have them Go. going far, actually, but I just think that Dallas, is it's their year. I was this close. I was this close to pulling out a Quran and just <laughs> fucking it up for all of you guys. It's like, just, no, they would have, I don't want to get involved in this. Just keep going. Whoop, whoop. Whoop.